Good day, beautiful friends, and welcome to Our Power is Within. I'm your host, Chaz Smith, aka Just Chaz, and I am on a mission to inspire people to take their power back and help people to realize that each and every one of us has a healer within our own self. When we can create an environment that supports healing and get out of our own way, we are truly capable of healing in mind, body, and soul. For those of you that are new to the show, welcome and thanks for being here. And for those of you that have been following along, I thank you for your continued support. If you would like to help me spread this message, um, I very much appreciate it. Some simple ways to do this are by leaving a review on Apple Podcast or a five-star rating if you feel I have earned it, also on Apple Podcast, and or sharing an episode with a friend or even on your social media. You can tag me at our power is within on Instagram. So today's challenge for the week might be very familiar for anyone out there listening that already does DNRS or any other brain retraining program, and it might be new for other listeners or not, but it is visualization. My challenge for you this week is each day make a commitment to sit or lie down or stand and walk yourself through a visualization. Imagine what you can hear, taste, touch, smell, and how you feel, and then breathe those feelings into your body, into your brain, into every cell in your body, into every organ, and sit with those feelings for a moment. Um, I don't suggest setting a time commitment per se. I honestly believe if you set a strict time limit, then maybe you might um, talk yourself out of doing it because of the timing. So just sit down and allow it to be whatever it is. Maybe it's three minutes for you one day, but you spent that whole three minutes really feeling the emotion. That's awesome. And maybe it's 10 minutes and that's awesome too. And if you're wondering what to visualize, the answer is anything really that would make you feel good. Maybe you can think of some version of your future self that you aspire to feel and be. Maybe you imagine yourself in some situation in your future where you're exuding calm and peace if you're trying to embrace or embody more calm and peace in your life. Maybe you're on a fun adventure filled with awe and wonder and a sense of playfulness. Or maybe you're on some tropical beach filled with a sense of bliss. It can literally even be completely fairy tale. Only you get to decide what feels really juicy and amazing for you. So give it a try and see how it goes. Um, Visualizations could become your new best friend. And our guest today is Stacy Dix. And Stacy and I talk a lot about the power of visualizations in this episode. So if it is a new concept to you, don't worry. By the end of this show, you will have a much deeper grasp on what they are and all the benefits. Stacy and I also go pretty deep into limiting beliefs, fears, and the pressure that we can create around exercise and nutrition on our quest to feel well. Um, Stacy has come a long way in her journey and she, and she shares her, her testimonial with us, including all the things that she has discovered along the way that has really helped her to shift into this new way of living and being, and who doesn't love a good recovery story, right? So inspiring. So let's go ahead and welcome her to the show and get into it. Hello, Stacy. Welcome to the show today. Thank you so much for being here with me. Hey, Chess. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, I am too. I've been really looking forward to this um, conversation with you. I know that um, the way we connected was I saw a, um, a brief testimonial that you shared in a Facebook group, and I was blown away with the progress that you were making. And um, it was just, it was really exciting to see that in the TMS community, you were making a lot of progress with more than just chronic pain, but also some illness stuff and other various uh, issues and symptoms. And I thought that was really cool. And so, yeah, I think that I think the message you're going to share today um, and in your approach and how you're going about your healing is going to be really special for the audience. 
Absolutely. I'm so glad that we connected over that. And it's, I think it's important for all of us as we go along in our healing journey to um, recognize and celebrate all those accomplishments, even if they're small, sometimes they seem big, but we know that all the little ones add up. And so I thought, I think it's important to post and share things like, okay, well, maybe I'm not there all the way yet, but hey, look what I can do now. And that's massive compared to six months or a year ago. So I think that's, that's one of the posts you saw. So yeah, I'm glad we connected. Yeah. And I'm also glad you mentioned that because that is absolutely a huge, huge component to, um, to this journey of transforming, becoming or healing is, oh my gosh. And I know we talk about it often on my show with different people is celebrate the wins, celebrate your like effort, um, celebrate yourself. Like I know something I do every night is to overcome that negativity bias that loves kicking in at nighttime focusing on the one thing you didn't do or that you didn't do good enough. And I love reframing and constantly being like super corny and reminding myself, Oh no, but you did this and this and this, and we've come so far. And yeah, it's, it's, it's important because we can really get stuck on where we're still needing to go or where we think we still need to go. And we can forget to celebrate along the way. I totally agree. And some of what I've been trying to do in my journaling and in therapy is kind of trying to convert uh, what I call, well, what we all call our inner critic, but converting that into our inner cheerleader. And it's hard, right? Like that takes constant, consistent effort. But like you said, if we can reframe and take that focus off okay, maybe I didn't do the six things on my list today, but I'm really proud of these two or three things that I did get done. It's kind of shifting that mindset and focus. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a really good way to look at it. Like shifting the inner critic to the inner cheerleader, mm-hmm. because we're all so good at cheerleading for each other. Right. <laughs> and <it's> not ourselves. <laughs> Generally not, not, yeah. not by default ourselves, mm-hmm. but we can definitely get there by design. Yeah, Absolutely. So, um, just to kind of set up the tone and everything and give people an understanding of kind of where you're at and where you've been and who you are, could you share, um, you know, we're going to kind of focus on what's worked and, in, and in, in the good stuff today, but I want people to at least understand like what you've already, um, you know, accomplished and how far you have come, because like we said, we want to celebrate these accomplishments and how far you've come. So you can share just kind of what your struggles or challenges have been and, um, and then what led you to a shifting point. Okay. So I will try to keep it kind of vague with, you know, I won't go into detail, but I'll just try to give listeners an idea of the plethora probably like that we all have of, um, symptoms, diagnosis things. So my journey was about 17 years long. Um, I guess it's, it's still going on a little bit, but it's at such a better point. But some of the issues or diagnoses are things that I struggled with, uh, that I'm in a better place. Um, chronic fatigue, for one, was, a, was big for me. And I feel, you know, beyond blessed to what I consider be on the other side of that. Because for me, um, it did come on overnight. Uh, 17 years ago. And the way doctors talked to me, I I kind of felt like it was a life sentence. And Chaz, as I started doing all the mind body work and focusing on the, on all the principles, it, it was a little tough because I didn't see a lot of other stories about people overcoming fatigue. It was like sprinkled in there, but I heard a lot about people overcoming all kinds of amazing pain symptoms. And I thought, gosh, this is going to work for me, but I wanted to try because, you know, at the point where you've tried everything else, (laughs) you're like, this has worked for so many other things. Why not this? But so for me, I'm just, I'm elated to, to say that uh, after 17 years of chronic pain and naps every day that that were maybe a couple hours each. I'm in the zone of no naps. I can make it through the day, which includes working out, which now includes going to school, 
um, taking care of my house. I got to fire the maid, which bummer for me, but I do take a lot of pride in being able to clean the house now. Um, <laughs> just when you don't have that capability and you get it back, it feels like a big accomplishment. So, um, yeah, to say that fatigue is in the rear view is, uh, I could almost be in tears from happiness of saying that. Um, the other thing that, that really had set me back, probably like many others, uh, is just pain associated with sitting. My brain had learned that that was dangerous. And so, gosh, it just took a lot to just to try to teach it that it was safe and calm that nervous system of mine that was just in hypervigilance. And so I went from having to sit on a cushion um, and, and really just being in a total activation of symptoms, if you want to say that, when I was sitting or lying down to now I can sit for hours and hours uh, today. And, and not that I will, will sit for five or six hours straight, but the fact that I'm not jumping out of my chair. Um, I'm not getting those discomfort or pain signals and my body has realized, oh yeah, sitting is safe. So and that's so massive to me. Um, I mean, gosh, we sit like a lot, right? I mean, everything we do <laughs> is kind of centered around like bending your butt and your waist. And so that that's just a massive, massive accomplishment. So those two things are, are probably the biggest. Um, and I have gone at my, at my worst. I was in a wheelchair, so I can say I've gone from being in a wheelchair and mostly housebound to, gosh, I'm hiking for an hour and a half at a time, a few times a week, um, back to my full body workouts. Um, I did want to let you guys know so my career, before I became too um, debilitated by symptoms, was a personal trainer and fitness instructor. And given that knowledge, I was still, um, fear had a great hold on me and I was still too, I guess, consumed by fear. Like we know that's the mechanism for keeping the symptoms going. and. I felt like a lot of shame and guilt because I thought, oh my gosh, I'm a personal trainer, I'm a fitness instructor, and I can't figure out how to get myself moving again and not be afraid of the pain. So um, over lots of diligent daily effort, I've gone from being afraid to bend at the waist um, due to symptoms, and, and now I'm working out every day, doing hard yoga, um, probably four times a week hiking. Um, I'm on my bike again. I hadn't bicycled and oh my gosh, I couldn't tell you the last time I'd gotten on one and I got on it five minutes this summer and then slowly increased to 10 minutes and 15 and gosh, now I'm up to an hour and it just feels like I'm living again. Mm. <laughs> it, I just feel so blessed. It's a good feeling. And you're, 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 you got to a place where you can say yes to life again. Yes. Yeah. So I just want to say something to relate to you and, and tell you it's a very, I feel personally like it's a super normal thing. And I, I completely understand where you're coming from when you say that your previous job being a personal fitness trainer, um, kind of in a sense, like how you could feel that shame or confusion around, oh my gosh, I'm, the, I'm supposed to be the person helping other people <laughs> yes. and I can't figure out how to help myself and what's mm -hmm. going on. And I want to yeah. say I'm with you. I get it. I was there. I spent my entire adult life in the fitness um, industry mm -hmm. um, and, or nearly my adult life, either, either in it as like a client or in it as like running a gym, coaching, all that stuff. Right. And I ended up having to walk away from that too, after my perfect storm. And I had felt the same things. It's like trying to muster the energy just to show up to teach a class. And then in the meantime, feeling like, well, why are they taking my advice? I can't figure it out for myself. Right. But I want to say, I know that you said that you, even in that having that experience that there was fear, I want to say it's not an okay. even though I kind of think that in some regards, unfortunately, there, there are a lot of uh, misconceptions that are um, thought to be truth in that industry and that are taught. And it, I almost feel like 
it's not a mistake or a coincidence at all that it led me down that path because mm-hmm. now in hindsight, looking back, I can see how incredibly misaligned I was to my truth because yes. I fell into so many traps of, um, I, I mean, I remember being the person who would post the meme that sitting is the new smoking. It's oh, like well, what sure. I was taught. I was yeah. what I, you know, so, so it's no wonder that your brain established that yeah. mindset, right? Like, and then I, I feel so grateful because thank the heavens for Dr. Sarno, because I read his book and I think, okay, you know what? If sitting, if your body can't handle sitting and isn't resilient enough to sit, then mm-hmm. you're doing something wrong, <laughs> you know? Right, right. So, like, But at that point, I already knew it wasn't physical, but that was like kind of my mindset. That was like a huge catalyst to be like, uh, <laughs> wait a minute here. We are so much more resilient than I've been taught Mm -hmm. in all of this stuff. And that I'm teaching people. I want to teach people to be empowered and resilient and, you know, and I think being in the fitness field and especially a coach and a trainer and an instructor, um, and having a lot of those mind, body, mind, body syndrome, personality traits that, that come with my body syndrome, um, pushing yourself and try and trying to be perfectionistic. And for me, trying to be that model for everybody else physically, mm-hmm. when my body was starting to go, I don't know, this feels like too much physically for me, but my mind insisted I must mm-hmm. show up. I must work out hard. I must be that coach because I can't do less than the people that I'm training. Yeah. And yeah, that's a bad, that's a bad setup and attitude. Um, I just want to acknowledge it's kind of what got me partly into the position of mind body syndrome. I do want to say it's not a bad attitude. That's true. We don't want to judge, right? The judgment is what gets us in trouble to begin with. Yeah. But it is a lot of weight to carry emotionally, a heavy pressure when you're in that type of position where you feel, and no one else is telling you you have to be, but when you feel you have to adhere to a certain standard. Right. And be this role model in a certain way, especially if, you know, you find out down the road, it wasn't exactly authentic for you. It's, it's right. heavy. It's a heavy load to bear. So, that makes sense. Yeah. Good reframe yeah. on that, Chess. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I'm really right now working on um, the judgments, the judgments, not having the judgments for the thought or the feeling. Yeah. It's a huge one. So, um, so yes, I just, all that, just to say, I completely understand where you were at and what that may have felt like. Yes, so I, I remember seeing your, your story and your pictures, um, of, of being in the fitness field as well. And I thought, okay, we can really relate to each other going through this journey. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And, you know, I don't know about you. I know for me, I can look back now and realize it was all for me. You know, it was all for me. And I don't know if you, or if you're at that point yet where you can see that it was all the universe in a sense, working to help, you know, the universe, your brain, your body, whatever you want to believe in to redirect you. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of in the middle there. And I I had posted about it maybe a month ago where the fact that I have listened to so many podcasts where people have said, I'm so grateful for for the pain or the symptoms because the journey of getting out of it and the self-discovery that comes with it, um, you just wouldn't believe if you don't go through it. And I thought, those people are nuts. They are <laughs> so crazy. Like, what are they on to say they're so thankful for for the pain. So I've gotten to a point, I don't know if it's total gratitude, but I can a hundred percent see the purpose in everything that I went through and in turning that around and using it for good. Um, And so I feel like I'm kind of still getting to the point where I'm totally thankful, but I can see what a teaching tool it's been. Um, And now that I'm coming out of the forest, 
I feel like it, it is, it is a blessing in disguise to have gone through that mainly so that I know I can turn it around and help so many people. And I think it just makes it worth it when, when you can use it for good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I a hundred percent agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, yeah. yeah. So you're in a good, you're in a, you're in a good place in that regard, yeah. you know, I'm in, a, I'm in a way better <laughs> spot. Yeah. It, to, to, to go from a place of being bitter, right. Or thinking your body's against you, which I never understood when in, in the beginning, when people said, no, your body loves you. It's not against you. I was like, what? what? I don't get it. Like, you know, it kept me down for so long, but it, it just takes that education and that mind sh mindset shift of focusing on how much your body loves you. And it's been trying to protect you the whole time. And that's a huge re revelation, I think, for right. all of us. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's such a beautiful uh, mindset shift to get to a place where, like you said, maybe I'm not at pure gratitude yet, but I'm at an understanding and an awareness. Yes. And I know there's a blessing in disguise. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the first, that's the first step of it. So what was the catalyst for you? Where did you get to that shifting um, point? Because we know that you were doing like, you know, I know that you, um, we've kind of briefly talked about, obviously you learned there's this mind body connection, but how mm -hmm. were you led into that? Right. So it, it, it's kind of funny because I've heard other people say this, but I think I was on Facebook one day and this blip or this banner from curable went by if that happened to anybody else i feel like i feel like they've been so prominent with their advertising like people are like oh yeah curable just totally came across my facebook one day and i was like what's that um so yeah i signed up for the curable app i want to say i'm trying to think what year it is uh, about a year and a half ago and I just dabbled in it. I really didn't commit. Um, do I need to explain Curable app or are most people familiar with that? Um, you can give a little brief because I never know when okay. there's somebody new listening. Sure. Um, so Curable is an app that is created by several long-term or, or I should say chronic pain sufferers. And it combines uh, brain science, um, education, pain education, and then gives us lots of tools on managing and relieving ourselves ultimately of those symptoms. So journaling and gratitude and things like that. So, um, so I started using that app a little bit, but it really wasn't until they rolled out their groups which if anyone is not familiar with that, it's a 12 week intensive boot camp that Curable puts on. And every week you do online sessions led by a therapist and you work through a lot of the mind body principles that we are learning or have learned and are working through right now. So that was like my springboard into the world of mind body syndrome. And from that, I found Nicole Sachs work, Dan Buglio, um, just gosh, all the TMS experts, Dr. Hanscom, Dr. Schubiner, and really just dove in and immersed myself in the learning, the books, the podcasts. Like if I was doing something around the house, I always had earbuds in, right? Just listening and learning like, oh, that's why my brain does that. Oh, that makes sense. Like it's, it's, it's a little bit like learning a new language. I feel like we have to learn why is this happening to me? And okay, no, now what do I do about it? So that was about a year and a half ago. So, okay. Let me ask you this. When you first saw this Curable banner app, did, like, did, uh, did you, were you instantly sold or were you kind of like, mm, no, my stuff's physical. The doctors told me like, was there resistance or were you instantly, did you have that nudge? Like, oh my God, this is it. You know, that's a good question. I, I never really thought about how I felt in that moment. I, I was intrigued. Let's leave it there. Um, I was like, this is interesting. Huh? Like, this is probably something I should look into because this other stuff I'm doing and, and doctors and Mayo Clinic and everything else. Um, 
hasn't worked yet. So um, I was curious, but you know what? I didn't have that total buy-in or realization of like, oh, this is for me. So yeah, I wasn't mentally there yet. I think that's what you're asking, like if it clicked and it hadn't clicked yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's the thing. Some people, I, I hear some people are like, yeah, I really was like apprehensive, but I thought, oh, fuck it. I, what have I got to lose? Yeah. And then other people like myself were like, oh my God, I'm written all over these pages. This yeah. is totally me. <laughs> yeah. It's like a combo for me. I was like, yeah, I'm not sure, but that makes sense. So it's like one foot in, one foot out. <laughs> Yeah, but you were curious. That's good. I, I think yeah. curiosity is one of the most beautiful um, personality mm -hmm. traits we can possess next to gratitude. I, I definitely agree. And I really think my my journey got, I don't know, I want to say deeper or I got more invested in it after I finished the curable group and I really immersed myself in Nicole Sack's work. And I was just like, you know, journaling every day, doing the gratitude and on the side, listening to different podcasts on mind, body healing, you know, um, mind, body mastery and, um, Eddie Lindenstein and, you know, Dan Buglio, whoever I could just like keep in my ear. So yeah, I think, I think the journaling and Nicole Sachs work was a big component, but I also wanted to point out I just kind of reminded myself when I said her name a year ago, like exactly, oh my gosh, to the day. I can't believe it. I'm looking at my wow. phone. A year ago, I went bravely. I was so brave. I went to New uh, Chicago and the girl who couldn't sit and was too afraid and, and too much pain to sit, um, Took, flew to Chicago for a workshop put on by Dr. Strax and Nicole Sachs over the weekend. And when I was in Chicago, I got an evaluation by TMS doctor, Dr. Strax. And that for me was like a breath of, I got to breathe a sigh of relief because he felt very strongly that all my crazy wackadoodle symptoms and pains were TMS. And mm -hmm. I just remember thinking, oh, like I can, oh my gosh, this is it. Like he, he's helped me find the answer. I'm validated in everything I've gone through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause even if we kind of believe it, when we have somebody else believe in us, it is, it is a powerful, you know, sometimes that's what we need is that just that one other person that like looks at us and tells yeah. us you got this, like, this is, this is your thing. This is what's going on and you can do this. Sure. And if they're, if we perceive them to be of authority and that subject, I mean, gosh, a TMS doctor and a super experienced psychologist LCSW that, that Nicole is, I thought, gosh, I'm under great care here and everything they're saying, um, I looked up to that and I believed it. And with those affirmations coming from them, it, it meant a lot to my nervous system to try to try to start to calm it down. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome. Great job yeah. on getting in the plane. <laughs> yeah, basically I posted on Nicole's group and I was like, I really wanna go, I'm, 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 I can't sit, I'm too scared, I don't know what to do. And she responded, she's like, go. She's like, you're going to, who cares if it hurts or whatever? She's like, you're going to learn all this stuff. And I was like, she's right. I just, I need to bite the bullet and go. But, but you know what, Chaz, that and every other thing I've done after that, I mean, up until this day that I've tried, that I've been scared to do. And I've thought, I'm not going to get my life back unless I try. And I keep doing it and keep putting myself out there. I keep getting more and more confidence Every time I accomplish something I think is hard or I can't do, and I think I can do it. I can do it. I am better. And the more we have confidence in ourselves and give ourselves that benefit of the doubt, so to speak, instead of being so afraid, that has been huge in my healing journey. Just, you know, that outcome independence. I'm just going to do it. 
and we'll see where it goes or what results, but the fact is I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was huge. absolutely. I think that's one of the coolest things about this journey is that we like, it's like we learn something and then we apply this thing and then we, we were able to apply it because we've gotten like one step better, but mm-hmm. then the act of applying it gets us even another step better. Yes. And it's just this constant kind of like climbing of this ladder, you know, that next step helps the next step helps the next step. Yes. And it's all this, it's this beautiful, like puzzle that just comes together. Mm-hmm. I yeah. totally agree. Yeah. So when you saw this curable app up into that point, have you ever prior to that point, have you ever even heard of this concept of mind body syndrome and that, um, that the, that, that though pain and illness can appear and be very real in the physical form that it doesn't necessarily mean it's a physical, um, underlying issue. No, I had not. And I think that's why it probably took me some time and I had some resistance, even though it sounded interesting. I think um, because I hadn't been exposed to it before, it just, it seemed kind of weird and foreign. Um, Some skeptic, some skepticism still there. And I think that's why it took me a while to, I mean, I just remember it was like a process of I don't want to say buying into the information because it really is, was life transforming information. But the fact that I hadn't been exposed to it before, I was like, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe I'll believe a little more, (laughs) maybe Mm -hmm. I'll believe a little more, but no, up until then I had not. And I think it's kind of weird because I don't know, being always healthy in the, in the fitness industry, all about nutrition, all about holistic stuff and the holistic approaches. This was brand new to me. Mm -hmm. How about you? Was that? Um, so no and yes, yes and no. I, I would say I first came to understand mind body connections, um, back in 2012. Okay. But just understanding phantom limb pain and that your brain can get stuck in a feedback Mm -hmm. loop. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that it was able to, that doesn't mean that that was the beginning of my healing necessarily, because I still had to like go through more stuff and get through a perfect storm. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is for me anyhow, and we're all so unique and we have our own journeys, but I know for me, the biggest thing is who, okay. So I had, um, um, Lisa Schlossberg on the show Mm -hmm. um, a while ago, and I know that she's been on Nicole's. And she says something so perfectly, like when she's talking about how you approach nutrition and food, it's not about what you eat. It's about why you're eating it and your mindset around it, the driving force. So are you eating the salad because you genuinely enjoy the salad or are you eating the salad because you're afraid that if you don't eat the salad, you won't be healthy? Exactly. Are you eating the pie because you're making a conscious choice to like, enjoy this savory treat Mm -hmm. or are you eating it because you're unconsciously addict, you know, unconsciously like covering your emotions. Like, so there's different reasons. And I don't know if this was your experience, but for me, I mean, I also, I had so many people, like all my family and my close friends always saying, you're the sickest, healthy, healthy person. I know like you're the sickest, sickest, healthiest person because on paper I did it all quote unquote, right. Right. But big, but it was all from a place of fear. Yes. Fear of gaining weight, fear of not being healthy enough, fear of not being a good enough role model, not being strong enough, not being fit enough, fear of, uh, I mean, to the point where I was so afraid of if I ever touched a single non-organic food, you know, fear of, well, you're in that industry, you know, you get these, all these nutrition certifications. And now, Mm -hmm. you know, now you're afraid of grains and you're afraid of dairy and you're afraid, you're just afraid of sitting and you're afraid of life of life. (laughs) So you on paper are doing all these things that you think are the right decisions, but it's, all fear driven and pressure driven and perfectionist driven. I can 1000% relate to everything you just said. I was just like, yes, 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 yes. And it's so true coming from that place of fear. And for me, probably like many listeners, I 
struggled with an eating disorder um, back in college, but because I was in such maybe the wrong mindset instead of a healthy mindset now, because it came from a place of fear and trying to control everything, it took me so long to recover from that. I mean, I must have probably dealt with it over 10 years, but you make such a good point of all the decisions that I was making were based on fear. Mm -hmm. Um, Every food I put into my mouth and I was so convinced Chaz that nutrition was going to be the healing mechanism for me because rationally it made sense. Like I know that good foods are good for the body and I was so into eating healthily that I thought, oh yeah, if I just do this gluten-free, if I do the dairy-free, I'm totally going to get better and chasing every diet. And again, maybe that's just because it was from a place of fear and wanting to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Um, That was a big part of my journey because I I really want to encourage people now Um, I think it's totally different if you have like a known celiac or, or definite trigger problem with a food, but I just wanted to encourage people that mindset around food is so huge. And I have, I have done like a 180, even from last year, I was doing dairy free, gluten free. I was so scared, Mm -hmm. um, to eat anything quote outside the box. And I was afraid I would be, I would view myself as less perfect. I wouldn't be good enough only by my own standards. Not that my husband ever made me feel bad, not that my friends or my parents, but for me, you know, I thought, oh my gosh, I eat that cookie, that cake, whatever. I'm just, I shouldn't be that weak. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you yeah but there's a judgment. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Judgment. Because yep. with that fear and with that perfectionism and that pressure comes a lot of judgments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's heavy. It's so, <laughs> so detrimental. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, when you can break, and that's where I say, there's the blessings, there's the blessings. Mm -hmm. Like it was all for me to like, to be where I am today and to realize like that now I get to have this insanely different relationship with how I approach food. Yes. And, and now it's like, I can eat the salad because I genuinely enjoy it. Not because I'm afraid that I have to. Right. I would, I would say, honestly, I'm still working on the last pieces of that. And a lot of it is from, I think, habit um, and just habitual thinking, right? Like we get stuck in that. Like I'm so used to thinking, oh, a morning shake full of veggies and you know, whatever I perceive to be healthy is like what I should do. And just I'm just working on those last percentages to free myself and... You know, tell my brain, hey, if I want to have an English muffin instead, that's it's okay. And yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. just fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not going to like so, start eating. You're not going to go like on the this other extreme where you're that's right. all you're eating every day. You know. Right. I mean, because yeah. especially once you've developed a palate for like really delicious, healthy, natural yeah. foods, like you're gonna your body's gonna crave them. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And that's the magic word that you'll always notice that will always guide and direct us in the right way, which is the should noticing whenever we yes. say should like, no, I, 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 yeah. I don't should, I shouldn't anything, but what do I want? And that's when I get to check in with myself yes. and say, what do I want right now? And I think that comes up. I, I noticed that most in my eating choices. I, I do notice it somewhat in my daily tasks of, oh, I should do this task instead of this, but I mostly notice it around my food because I should all over myself, right? Like we shouldn't be shooting all over ourselves all day long uh, because then our, our brain, we're just putting our nervous system back into fear because if we're not doing what we think we should, then we're scaring ourselves. And, and it's not compassionate, right? It's not that's not self-compassionate to, to say, well, I should be doing this and that. Um, so I'm definitely working on that as well. And noticing, even when I journal, when I write the word should, usually it comes to my brain first and I'll let my, I'll let my fingers write it, but then I'll go back and reframe and say, you know what? 
I don't need to, or I, I, I reframe that should into a better light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's beautiful because every time, um, we're never going to be again, it's like, we won't ever be perfect. But the greatest thing is, is every time we catch ourselves and redirect that's progress. Right. Yeah. Because that's every time you do that, you're, you're literally rewiring and teaching your brain that you're going to do something differently. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Well, yeah, we're all just on a journey, man, to the last breath. So I would just say it's never going to end. Not until, not until we leave this earth. (laughs) I mean, I mean, we don't have to always try to, you know, be our best version, but I think, I think there's a drive there for many people Mm -hmm. naturally. Always growing. Yeah. Um, so kind of, so, okay. So kind of segueing in, we're, we're, we're talking about these realizations and, um, things, areas that you're, you know, still working through because you're realizing, you know, Hey, I want to work on not shooting on myself and I'm still working through some old habits, which we all are because they're, they're deeply ingrained. Yeah. So what are, what are some of the other, like, lessons that you've been learning along the way, like the big aha moments or epiphanies that, yeah. have, um, you know, have yes. come, that you've come across? Great question. So I would say, so I'm going to kind of go over like what's been really key and helpful, um, and that I've noticed, like really propelled me forward. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to say something that that I had put in my notes that I remember Nicole probably saying months ago, maybe a year ago when I listened to her podcast, and she said something to the effect of time is going to pass anyways, so why not apply the TMS principles and work on it and see how much better you are in a year? Like, it's not going to hurt. So that kind of always stood out in my mind as to, I could keep doing what I'm doing, which hasn't gotten me too far. Um, or I could try this new approach and be really brave and just give it my all. And so that, that's kind of like the mindset that I took, like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this and see how well I can do. Um, so for me, I've got some, some, gosh, a number of key helpful things in my journey. One was outcome independence. We kind of talked about that, just like doing, doing what I was maybe scared to do, but I wanted to do, whether it was yard work or a new workout or whatever it was, because starting to do something or giving it my effort meant for me, um, getting my life back. Right. Because if it was going to sit in a kayak, oh yeah, maybe I'm afraid of sitting and it might've hurt, but I was out on the lake, I was breathing the air, I was with my husband, and that to me is life. Not like sitting at home being afraid of what if it hurts if I get in the kayak. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I think another huge, I don't don't know what you want to call it, approach, mindset, um, tactic has been setting goals for myself and working towards them. I think as TMSers, as people in the mind-body journey, we can get so self-focused because, you know, rightly so, we're trying to get better. We're trying to, to fix maybe what we think, shift our mindset, work on all the principles. But what I found is kind of taking the focus off myself and putting it toward a bigger, just a bigger goal, like something to work toward, something that excited me, that really got me going. So for me, one of the things was, so back in October, you know, I had, I started seeing some relief from symptoms. I was not ideally where I wanted to be, but I, I was seeing that this mind body work, there was such um, power behind it. There was such um, something that I needed to seize and and jump on it. And so I thought I'm gonna look into going back to school 
and I researched different mind body schools and just found the perfect program for me. And I enrolled <laughs> at the end of last October. Um, and I'm going back to become a mind body practitioner and holistic life coach and nutrition coach. And that to me was so scary. And I felt a lot of imposter syndrome because I thought I am not better. I'm not healed, but you know, I'm working on myself and I knew that if nothing, school would help me personally to get to a better place, a better healthy place inside in a relationship with myself. Um, and I thought if, if I can continue to get better and apply this and teach other people how to do it, then what better way to use all this crap that I've been through and the pain and the tears and use it for good. And now I'm so stinking excited about it. I mean, I've been in school for like four months and I'll be done by the end of this year. Um, and Chaz, like I went from when I started sitting, studying, my back was like, oh, no, 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 you got to sit here. And I was like, you know what? I'm sitting here. I'm doing school. So just deal with it, brain. This is safe. You're going to be fine. And gradually, you know, just sitting and studying became a non-issue because I got so excited about the goal that I was focusing on that my body the focus on it wasn't as important anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, that is really exciting. So I want to ask you a question. This mm -hmm. is piquing my curiosity. Yes. Now, are you, because sometimes we can put the focus back on, on something outside of us mm -hmm. and in the realm of like getting a coaching certification, mm -hmm. you know, what we can do is we can end up finding ourselves back in that same game where we're feeling this pressure, especially because of the imposter syndrome, right? Same thing when you're in a fitness coach, like, oh, right. I need to like, li I need to live up to the standard to be um, valid at my job, you know, right. worthy of having this position or role, but, right. or so, you know, so, so that could essentially show up down the road in like another time in, in another time when you step into like another type of role like that, where it's like, you could put this pressure, like I have to be so healed or I can't help people. So how, what ways have you been, um, working to, make sure that you don't step back into those old patterns to approach this in a, in a more pressure free, allowing, um, space or way. Mm, that's a good question. I think being so aware of it, um, of the possibility or the threat that my brain perceived of myself presenting myself as an imposter, now that I'm so aware of that thought and wanting to, to not get back into that loop, um, I think one of the ways that, that I try to circumvent that is to be super real and transparent on social media. I try to share my journey for exactly what it is. I try to say, Hey, this is scary guys. Like I'm not there yet, but I feel like people can and want to relate more to a human being than a perfect being. And for me, it's just reminding myself of that all the time and working on that in therapy and having people close to me that I respect tell me nobody wants somebody that's all perfect and figured out. They want somebody that is real, that is going to relate to the issues they've been through. Um, so I, I think that's part of it. I kind of mm. forgot the exact question, but then I'm not sure if I just addressed it or not. No, you totally did. And it's okay. so incredibly true. Like, is that not such a huge lesson that you've learned huge. that you now get to apply? Like I can say that cause I, 
same here. Like to, to how it seems like how you how you and I both showed up in our previous position or role of a coach was we had this expectation that we had to be perfect, have it all figured out. Yeah. And no one can relate to that. Right. I mean, I can't tell you how many people would be like, oh, well, nutrition's easy for you and it's not right. easy for me. And I was like, but it's not easy for me. It's not so hard, <laughs> not, you yeah. know, like, because I wouldn't let them know the struggles. Cause I thought if they did know the struggles, yes. then I lost credibility. Absolutely. But now from what you just said, you're learning and I'm learning that like people actually want that transparency, the mm-hmm. truth. They want to know that like, oh my gosh, she's right there in the trenches with me. Yes. She's you know, she's figuring it out too. And, and it's so much more relatable. It is. And I saw that for so long, like you just said, it's kind of me being a failure as a person. Like if, if I didn't look good enough in the gym and on social media, kind of in my former life or, you know, who I presented myself as before, um, I, I thought, well, you know, people aren't going to want to work with me and I couldn't possibly post something on social media of, you know, me eating ice cream or, you know, whatever it is that I perceived might have been a failure on my part is not Mm -hmm. being good enough. And now it's so humbling. I don't know about you, but it's so humbling to, to see and to realize and to embrace I am a human being. I am absolutely allowed to have and do things that might not be perceived as perfect behavior, but in doing that and in cutting ourselves some slack, I think we love ourselves more when we don't continue to hold ourselves to those ridiculous standards. Um, I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense. 100%. We are perfectly imperfect. Yeah. And that's okay. (laughs) Absolutely. So now you get to, you're shifting into this whole new direction Mm -hmm. in life through all of these experiences and, and you're able to shift into them in a whole new mindset. Yeah, absolutely. That's really beautiful. See, there's huge gifts in the pain. There is. uh, Absolutely. And I think the more we can try to see those gifts and see what they are, I think it just, it helps melt even more of the pain away just Mm -hmm. um, more and more. But I did want to share, if it's cool with you, I wanted to share some books that helped me and some some resources that, and it might not resonate with, with everybody, but hey, it might with some. So Besides the typical, um, I say the typical, but the popular books of Nicole Sachs and Steve Ozanich, um, I do want to give a shout out to Steve Ozanich's The Great Pain Deception because I just finished it like a week ago and I must have bought it like eight months ago, but I just would read like a few pages and then not pick it up for a couple of weeks, but I just felt like it was such a fantastic, comprehensive book on mind-body syndrome. So um, I just wanted to recommend that in case anyone's thinking of getting a book. Um, I listened to Sarno's Healing Back Pain on CD because this is funny, like somebody, and this is just like the divine working, somebody gave it to me years ago and I had it in my car and it's this old CD set, the book on CD. And I would listen to it in my car. Um, I would just pop it in while I was running errands. And that was kind of along the time where I was starting to like, what is this mind body? What is this, you know, mind body syndrome? This is weird. And honestly, I listened to it like, I don't know, four or five years ago, it's like, well, whatever, put it back in my glove box. <laughs> and then it popped up on my radar again and pulled it out like a couple years ago. I'm like, okay. And then I listened to it again, like the past year. I'm like, okay, you know, this is really sinking in. But so definitely Sarno's books for sure. But what I also wanted to add was that I did a couple Bible studies that combine neuroscience with scripture and for anybody that is looking for maybe some faith-based neuroscience um i just really 
wanted to recommend the couple that I did that I loved and that I feel like really helped me rewire my thoughts from negativity and dis-ease over to just the promise of life and Mm -hmm. God's promises for us, which are healing and wholeness. Um, And two of those, uh, one is called Fully Alive and it's by Susie Larson. And the other one, you may have heard of Dr. Caroline Leaf. She's a Christian neuroscientist. And her book is called Switch on Your Brain. And she basically, she has something called a 21-day brain detox that she covers in her book. Her book is split up into two parts. And I'm still on the first part. So the first part, she she talks about all the neuroscience and how scripture and science like mirror each other. And then like, I haven't gotten to the second part yet, but I guess she takes you through how to rewire those thoughts over to a healthy um, neural pathways and lining them up with God's promises. So I just wanted to point that out, that that was super helpful for me. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. And I'll put, um, I'll put that in the show notes too, for anyone who's listening that, that, you know, that resonates with them. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. So, um, while you're on, um, on, while we're on this, like kind of topic of sharing, Mm -hmm. what are some of your favorite self-care rituals? Mm. That's a good one. Um, I'll just kind of take you through part of my routine and see if it resonates with anybody, but and self-care, I think, can mean so many different things to different people. So, yeah, we'll see what what resonates with people. But in the morning, I just find I need some quiet time. I get my coffee, and then I immediately come up to my study, and I do my journaling. And I do that because I used to do it in the middle of the day, and I, I felt like it was um, impeding or infringing, infringing on my day. And now when I do it first thing in the morning, I feel like it's a nice brain dump and I just get all the junk out of my brain, get it onto paper. Um, and then from there, Chaz, I move right into my workout. I'll either go do like 30 to 40 minutes of tough yoga or, Thankfully, now I've been able to get back to full body workouts in the past couple months, and um, nothing makes me happier than that. Like, I'm on cloud nine for that. So that's kind of the morning. I feel like I'm taking care of myself by taking care of my mental, doing my brain dump, doing my physical, what makes me feel good and makes me feel pumped up. And... I'm still still trying to figure out when exactly to fit in my meditation, but I I like to finish all my morning stuff, which usually after that includes Bible study, and then I'll come up, and before I do school, I like to try to just go meditate, whether that's visualization or a guided meditation. And the reason I like visualization, Chaz, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts too, but basically because with visualization i get to create not only my meditation time but what i want to focus on in creating in the next day and the next month and the next year of what i want my life to look like and how i want to feel like i feel energetic and i visualize myself in the front of the computer working with clients and how much i'm helping them and does that resonate with you at all do you visualize your... Yes, very. Yes, very much. Yeah. It's a my favorite, favorite, favorite tool. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sometimes the tool I find myself in most resistance to sometimes start, which makes sense because my brain knows it's powerful. Yes, um, sure. but it's also the most impactful, and it leaves me feeling the most um, like just good and yes. juicy and complete. I don't. Yes. It absolutely visualizing mm-hmm. is my opportunity in my mind to sit down and manifest and create my the life of my dreams. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's, it's thinking, it's how you think and feel greater than you think and feel. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I agree. And so I try, I try to do that, if not every day, as far as the visualization part, because sometimes I will just do a guided meditation with insight time or something, but I am the same way. I like to lie in silence. Actually, I'll put white, white noise on just so I have that background, but then I can just really let my mind go into, I'll start, I've been visualizing my workouts actually for a few months now. And in this, I'd be curious to hear if you've done this, but especially because during my recovery journey, um, bending and squatting and anything with my lower body provoked a lot of symptoms. I use that visualization of working out with total energy and no symptoms to seriously, Chaz, manifest the fact that I can now do those things. And that's no coincidence. Because Not at all. My brain said, oh, she's doing it. Oh, she can do it. So mm -hmm. I actually have a vision board in front of me and I shared it a while ago on social media, but a few months ago when I was afraid to get back into total body workout and moving every which way that I used to be able to, I did cutouts of all the things that were scary for me, which were deep lunges and um, bridges and hard yoga poses and words like energy and vitality and living and limitless. And now I can probably do 80% of those. And it's probably just because I haven't really ever tried the other 20% yet, but I will. <laughs> so that's how powerful it is. Yeah, absolutely. And that's awesome. Um, I very much do the same thing. I visualize work. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you you can use visualization for how you want today, tomorrow and next year, your whole future to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's a form of, it's a form of graded exposure for sure. It's yes. like definitely that first good step where, when you know that just thinking about a trigger can set you off, that's yes. a really great first step is like not to think you know, if you can create this visualization where you can be there without being triggered per se and create the feel good emotions attached to it. Mm -hmm. And I even use, this might seem silly, but probably not because we're talking about visualization, basically manifesting how you want your day or your life to go. But recently I've been teaching myself email marketing and it's, it's a bit difficult if you're not familiar with it because I want to be able to do that with my soon to be business. And so I've been learning it and just struggling with um, learning the concepts. And so during my visualization, like a week ago, I visualized myself sitting down in front of the computer, looking at the tutorial again, and then just figuring out exactly what I needed to do after I had struggled for like two weeks and been so angry and frustrated and Chaz, I kid you not that day, everything, like I figured it out. I was calm and I just, I don't know. I blew my mind a little bit. <laughs> that is awesome. So, crazy. That's really cool. Yeah. No visualization is pretty powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really love it. I, I definitely agree. Like sometimes I definitely want to just lay there and like be guided, yeah. Yeah. but, um, I really love the feeling of doing visualizations. So empowering, right? Like, yeah, very much create your, create your feet. Especially when, especially when you have them, like you just said, come true. Mm -hmm. Then you yeah. feel like, Whoa, I am, I am powerful. Yes, um, we are. We are. <laughs> I think the other thing, just one other maybe key aspect, we probably touched on it. We just didn't use the actual terminology, but for me, indifference um, mm -hmm. was, was just a massive tactic to apply. So what that looked like for me was, oh, okay, my back is being super less than ideal. It was not <laughs> feeling as ideal as I would like, but um, I'm going to go vacuum the house and do what I need to do anyways. And in doing so, letting my brain know 
Now that back stuff, it's really not important, but cleaning and doing what I need to do today is important. And, you know, it, it takes time, but my brain eventually is like, oh, okay, we're not going to focus on the symptoms I see. So I just wanted to point out how important indifference is with your mindset in, in getting on with your life. Huge. Massive. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a big deal to be, yeah. I mean, it's very helpful, productive to be indifferent. Um, and, uh, and it's funny because I know even in my last week's episode, we were talking about this and we we're like, and the key is being indifferent without expectation. It's not, I'm going to be indifferent today because I expect I'll just suddenly not have pain. It's right. I'm going to be indifferent today because I'm just going to be indifferent yeah. because I'm going to teach my brain mm -hmm. that this pain is not anything to be scared of anymore. Absolutely. And <laughs> yeah. people, people message me like, how do you, I don't get it. I'm so stuck in fear. How do you be indifferent? How do you? And it, it just, it takes practice. Like, mm -hmm. and I think it's, um, it's a little bit of like, you got to fake it till you make it. You, you just need to practice that until your brain and nervous system finally catch up. And they're like, Oh, okay. I get it now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, takes time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for sharing all that. So what is in everything that you've been learning along this journey so far, what would be your like biggest piece of advice? Um, I guess I have a few that I think are super important for, for moving along our TMS healing journey. Um, for me, the mindset of, I call it the mindset of whatever, and it goes along with that mindset of indifference of, okay, I feel X, Y, Z today. And that's super, not how I want to feel yet, whatever. I'm going to go um, study and walk the dogs and back in the house because that's all the stuff that I need to do and want to accomplish today and not give into my body or, or the symptoms. Um, oh, one thing we didn't talk about, which I think is super important. It's been really key in my healing journey is keeping an evidence journal of all of your wins and and write it down with the date and then read it and read it and read it to show your brain what you have done and what you have accomplished. Because the brain is like a little kid. I like to think of it as a little kid. It needs lots of coddling and encouragement. And so when I write, when I write down, oh, I worked out hard 30 minutes and I had friends over for five hours and you know, I entertained and I cleaned the house, like, whoa, I couldn't do that six months ago. Like, good job, you know? So yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, say you have that one day where you're feeling a little more tired, you get yeah. wrapped up in, oh my God, I'm not healing. Nothing's uh -huh. working, blah, blah, blah. What am uh -huh. I doing wrong? I'm tired today. <laughs> Go read your evidence you know? journal. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I'm glad you brought that up. Because to be honest, that's actually one of the things we're supposed to do in the brain rewiring program that I've been a okay. part of for the last 18 months. Okay. And I would say it's the one thing I don't do enough oh. of. <laughs> uh, like, and when I say not enough of, I never, ever, right? <laughs> but I, 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 I have good intentions. <laughs> You're like, what are you doing? I just haven't done it yet. Yeah, yeah. And so I definitely can go down those little, I, I can definitely spiral down into those moments sometimes, but I'm really at least now at a place where I can bring myself out of it and, yeah. and consciously and verbally remind myself. Right. But I, I do feel the evidence journal would be tenfold more powerful. Mm -hmm. And and I think especially, Chaz, in the beginning, because I mean, to me, in the beginning, like we still have all the symptoms, we're still afraid, and we're like trying to figure out how is this all going to work for me. And so, yeah, especially in the beginning, if you can date, and, and I like keeping a track of not necessarily everything I did all day, but what, what felt like an accomplishment. So... You know, for me, it's often my workouts because I'm pushing myself beyond what I could do a month or several months prior. 
um, if I accomplish new moves, if I sit for a certain amount of time, if I go hiking or do certain activity for longer than I did it a month ago, all that is is definitely in need of celebration. And when we see it on paper, we get to do a little happy dance for ourselves because we see it's real when it's on paper, it's not just in our head. Right, absolutely. I love that. That's awesome. So that's, um, so you have the, that, the mindset of whatever. Yeah, and then I would say the other two things as far as key would be key keeping the indifference and the outcome independence tactics that that ties in a little bit with the whatever mindset. And then the other thing I think is important, and this is my opinion, I'd love to hear yours. I feel like keeping a constant flow of TMS education or success stories or podcasts in front of you on a consistent basis is important because I I think it, it takes a certain amount of time to understand the principles and totally grasp them with your full entire understanding. But once we do that, I think we need repetition of the principles and the success stories of people recovering. I feel like until we're free of symptoms, because I just think our brains are little kids like I said, that need that encouragement. They just need that repetition to learn that it's going to be okay. And what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, like it's something I was just telling my dad the other day is when, when we have so many old, um, uh, old thought patterns or behavioral patterns that are on autopilot and we can so easily kind of sink into autopilot, um, mindset, um, having the, the presence of information that supports the mindset we want to adopt yes. can be really powerful. Something I did learn though, is to make sure that the, the seeking of the knowledge, the, of the intellectual experience doesn't replace the experiential component. So am I, so busy seeking more information that I'm not actually applying it. Right. Absolutely. That's, agree. that's, that's the, that's the, that's the balance is, is making sure that I'm actually living it, not just mm -hmm. listening to it. Totally agree with that. And the fact that we don't want to be immersing ourselves in it all day long to the fact that it is our full-time job of trying yes. to get better and heal. And in the beginning, I'm not going to lie. I immersed myself. I was like in the pool all day long of this information, but I, I think each person is a little different in what's your learning style. How much do you need in the beginning? But then we also have to be cognizant of the fact you can't Day immersed in all that you need to pull back eventually once you learn it and then start applying it just like you said and find that balance of what's enough to keep a trickle of in information and success stories and just that correct mindset in front of me but not so much that it takes away from me living life again right totally yeah I agree with you on yeah. that part. And, um, yeah. And I know it's, again, I think it's like what we talked about earlier. What's the driving force, right? Because I, I can openly admit that I've struggled in my past, just like with the fitness or anything else. Like I had to like know everything and I had to have it all perfectly figured out and I needed to know the next thing. And I would overly inform myself. I mean, read three books at once and there was still, the underlying force was still this pressure and urgency rather than just pure, like purely for joy and inquisitiveness. Do you know what I'm saying? And so that was a balance of like, Oh wait, I can just read like one book at a time. Right. I can actually just take a pause and go read a fiction novel and like laugh out loud at the story. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I had to really check myself and wonder if am I, seeking, 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 seeking for validation to affirm my worthiness and my value by my knowledge level, or 
am I, is there a balance again, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. I remember my therapist, I've been working with her for almost two years. She's a TMS knowledgeable therapist. And I just, I just really lucked out um, by finding her. But the very first time we talked and I gave her my background and in our first session and many times after that, she told me, I, I want you to take a break from all of this education and learning and just try to be and just try to live your life. And I tell you what, Chaz, I fought that tooth and nail. I was like, no, I must learn. I must keep podcasts in my ear. I must, I must do, 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 right? I must learn. And that goes back to that self-pressure. And it, I think the journey, I mean, everyone's is so individual and eventually we learn what does and doesn't work for us. And now I can see what she was trying to teach me was just try to let go of that perfectionism, try to step back and just be, and just absorb it. Um, so kind of what you were saying. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff today. I am going to have, <laughs> I'm going to have us wrap up here. Just, um, I like to try to keep them around one fifteen. Um, but do you have anything else that you just want to share? Any final pieces of, of you advice, wisdom, thoughts, whatever's going on in your mind? I feel like I dumped it all out in the, in the interview, but I would just, the only other thing I would say is just, when you're, when people are frustrated, when you're in the journey and it doesn't, you can't maybe see the results fast enough, I would just um, encourage you to keep going and to borrow other people's success and faith that, you know, this, this approach does work and it is helpful no matter what kind of results it brings for you personally. I would just say to keep going. And I just wanted to put myself out there as a resource. If anyone wants to reach out um, that I can encourage, just, I just want to be there for people that, that need help along the way. Cause I think that's what this is all about right now is just giving back and helping other people um, get their lives back too. That's awesome. Thank you. And how can people get in touch with you? Let's see, on Instagram, my handle, all one word, is mind, body, faith, fitness, mind, body, faith, fitness, and uh, Facebook, Stacy S-T-A-C-E-Y, last name, Dix, D-I-C-K-S. Awesome. I will leave those in the show notes as well, Stacy. Right. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate people's willingness to show up and speak to their stories because it takes a, a, a level, a large level of vulnerability that I admire. Yeah. Thank you. All right, self healers. That's a wrap. I hope you felt inspired in some way today and learned some tips or tricks from Stacy herself. Have fun with your visualizations. Be as imaginative and playful as you desire. And just a reminder, if you have a story that you feel compelled or ready to share, please shoot me an email or DM me and let's connect. And until next time, make this week great.